Innovation itself is inherently risky. Not all ideas lead to success. However, openness encourages an environment where experimentation is valued over the fear of failure. It's about creating a safe space for trial and error. And this approach not only accelerates the pace of innovation, but it also builds resilience and adaptability amongst individuals and teams. You're listening to Prospecting on Purpose, where we discuss all things prospecting, sales, business, and mindset. I'm your host, Sarah Murray, a sales champion who's here to show you that you can be a shark in business and still lead with intentionality and authenticity. Tune in each week as we dive into methods to connect with clients, communicate with confidence, and close the deal. Welcome to Prospecting on Purpose. I have had something that has just been whirling in my mind for a while now, so I wanted to do a short podcast episode about it. I've been thinking about success and how people achieve their goals and how they build unique and really impressive companies and this concept of where does innovation come from? In my life and my career, I've been fortunate to meet many accomplished and inspiring people. I have noticed a trend that most professionals who have succeeded in their careers or built businesses all have something in common. This key trait that I've been seeing is this ability to be open. If you listen to this show, you know that my sales background includes hospitality, technology, manufacturing, construction, and many different B2B and B2C business models within those various industries. And I enjoy them all. I actually think one of my strengths is having a diverse background, which allows me to pull things from different industries to better serve my clients and better serve the podcast audience. But I want to talk about one industry in particular, because I think there's something in this industry that we can emulate in all of our industries. This is the hospitality industry. I personally love people. So it's just one of my passions, people. And I always assumed I was drawn to the hospitality industry because it's a group of professionals that also love people. It is just in the name, right? Creating hospitable environments, being of service to others. That's what I always thought gravitated me towards the hospitality industry. But I think it goes deeper than that. Travel, which is, of course, a key component in hospitality, makes us open. We're open to different cultures, opinions, and experiences. And one of the key reasons traveling makes us more open-minded is its ability to push us out of our comfort zones. Whether it's navigating a foreign city where we don't speak the language or trying a cuisine that's radically different than anything we've ever tasted, each new experience changes us in ways that growth necessitates. But it also introduces us to this concept of relative truth. Everyone has their own view of reality. So what's considered normal or acceptable in one culture might be unusual or inappropriate in another. And this is a really powerful lesson in humanity because it teaches us that our way of life is not the only way or even the, you know, quote unquote, best way. And so we can think about how this translates to so many different types of work situations we may find ourselves in. And there can be many ways to achieve an outcome. Through these experiences, we develop deeper understanding of humanity, fostering a sense of global citizenship and this interconnectedness. It encourages us to think more broadly to embrace the unknown with curiosity rather than fear. I'm using travel as this example because that's what makes the hospitality industry so special, but it's just one example of how we can achieve openness. There's so many ways we can add more elements of openness to our lives. Books, podcasts, documentaries. We can travel locally. We can explore a new neighborhood, try a different type of food we've never tried explore a new hobby, take a class. All of these examples are essentially just putting ourselves into unknown situations. The reason why this is important when it comes to our work is that very often we don't explore outside of our industries. If we stay so focused on our roles within our own industries or our own companies, it closes us off to innovation. If companies aren't open or if we, you know, stick to the way things have always been done, they're going to fall behind or potentially disappear entirely. Putting ourselves in a state of regular openness is going to remind us to take off our work blinders and be open to what's around us. And by doing so, our work is only going to improve because we're going to be more open to innovation. 
When we're open, we approach things with curiosity. This is especially important when it comes to making assumptions about other people or other situations, which we talk about a lot on this show. When we're meeting new people, if we're networking or prospecting for new business, if we stay open and we stay curious, it allows us to create genuine connections. This then translates to staying present. When we're present and involved in the conversation without planning our responses in advance, this is where we can lead to really creative business development ideas, but they result in innovation that's actually executable. Innovation itself is inherently risky. Not all ideas lead to success. However, openness encourages an environment where experimentation is valued over the fear of failure. It's about creating a safe space for trial and error. And this approach not only accelerates the pace of innovation, but it also builds resilience and adaptability amongst individuals and teams. It fosters a culture of collaboration and open communication where knowledge and ideas can flow freely across teams, departments, organizations, industries, and communities. To wrap this all up in two sentences, openness is the key to innovation, and it's a key we all have access to. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. If you were looking for a sign to take a trip, this is it. Use it as an opportunity to practice your openness. I want to thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Prospecting on Purpose podcast. If you loved what you heard today, subscribe to the podcast and please rate and leave a review. For more info on me or if you'd like to work together, feel free to go to my website, sarahmurray.com. On social media, I'm usually hanging out at Sarah Murray Sales. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.